Well, I'm Josh Wallet. I am a certified residential appraiser out of Colorado. So some folks may not be uh, real familiar with Colorado, but I am in Western Colorado in Grand Junction, Colorado. So we have small city, Grand Junction, and then a lot of surrounding towns, rural and remote areas. And so, um, you know, we see a lot of different uh, property types. And what I've done is I have uh, moved on to consulting work. So we do consulting for technology companies, for lenders, for AMCs, for individual appraisers, as well as large appraisal firms. And we really tend to focus on the change we're seeing in the profession and the surrounding uh, industries, as well as valuation issues, proper methods and techniques. We take a look at policies and procedures. Uh, we insist uh, or assist with uh, investigations uh, and, and different complaints that may go to state boards. So we, we work in a lot of different spaces. Every day is, is very different, um, but you know, we tend to focus on compliance and valuation, uh, including uh, modernization and a lot of changes and how uh, the profession as a whole can be more efficient, uh, not focused solely on speed, right? But uh, being efficient, accurate, reproducible, transparent, uh, and consistent. So that's really a lot of the focuses we have no matter the project we're working on. Wonderful. Well, thank you for partnering with us on this project. Clearly an expert in the field compared to a newbie myself. So <laughs> I'm Amanda Marin. I am with the Value Link Software. I have been in the industry for about a year and a half now. I've been kind of wrapped up in the sales world for probably close to 15 years now. Um, made a transition about a year and a half ago into this industry and have taken the last year and a half really learning the Value Link system, learning the mortgage industry, and getting to know a lot of wonderful people um, and kind of working the ins and outs of the whole process along the way. So it's been it's been an interesting learning process, but a good one too. So Josh, I guess we'll kick it off. Um, a big hot topic that's been in the industry for several years now, appraisal modernization. Nothing new, but still evolving as the process goes along. Um, so what are your thoughts on the need for the appraisal modernization that's been occurring over the last few years and still kind of in process now? Right. Well, you know, I tend to look at something like this, first off, starting from a place of everything changes, right? Everything changes. There's always going to be something disrupting our lives, whether we're looking at professional, whether we're looking at personal, there's always something changing, right? And disruption, I don't necessarily mean negatively, right? It, it just mm -hmm. means we're, we're adjusting to it. And so when we take a look at modernization, if we're talking modernization, it, it can take on different meanings, depending on who's talking and depending on who's listening. So sometimes people say, oh yeah, modernization, we think of analysis tools and crunching the numbers better. We can actually look at more accuracy in our conclusions as, as valuers, as appraisers, but that's not really what we're tending to talk about. Usually when we hear the word modernization, it's not necessarily on that that uh, that development side, that, that analysis side. Many times it's on the data collection side, it's on the forms and reporting side, and it might touch on some analysis, but it really kind of stays away from that. So you know we're we're taking a look, you know, what is the need for modernization? And one of the one of the the uh, pushes for it really came uh, from long turn times uh, in certain areas of the country. Uh, there were certain areas, especially some rural areas that had, uh, you know, it, it didn't, it didn't, uh, you know, have the five or six or seven day turn time that was expected. And maybe it was two or three or four weeks. And, mm -hmm. and people started to really question, you know, how can we move some things along? And so we, we ended up with this modernization concept, which has been worked on for, you know, over a decade. I mean, they've been talking about it. They've been holding meetings. They've been, you know, uh, exploring this and piloting some of these things. And so we have a lot more options uh, in the valuation space, especially the residential valuation space, where appraisers are being posed with, uh, with assignments that are very different to what we might have seen you know, five or 10 years ago. And, and lenders have more sort of at their disposal now. They don't have simply you know, a waiver or a full appraisal. They have a lot of in-between offerings, in-between options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to your point, some of the different perspectives, I agree, because from a technology side, we see things coming and changing over the years, you know, the need to be more efficient, the need to be more compliant, how can we stay innovative and make sure that the lenders on our side are getting what they need, as well as the appraisers and AMCs. So there's this whole realm of different perspectives, depending on what side you're on. So I, I agree with that. 
Um, but going back to the need with these changes that are that are coming about, what could be some of the potential benefits that these lenders or appraisers and AMCs can see from these changes that are coming about? Yeah, I mean, some of the big changes we're going to see are, and, and we're already seeing, uh, are, are property data collection uh, people, property data collectors, or the process of property data collection. And so this can be performed by an appraiser, but more often we're seeing it's being performed uh, by a uh, real estate agent. It's being performed uh, maybe by uh, they're they're not someone who ordinarily has a license. They're they're receiving some training. They are going through some testing, making sure they know what they're doing. And then we're seeing this property data collection report. And the, one of the reasons for that is not necessarily. And as an appraiser, uh, you know, we see scenarios where an appraiser is being offered that property data collection report and being asked, "Will you do a hybrid?" A hybrid appraisal. Use this data. Don't leave your desk. Just do a hybrid appraisal. Use this data as the subject uh, data collection, the subject inspection, so to speak. But really, one of the primary reasons for this property data collection process is for lenders then to have a basis to issue a waiver where they say, all right, we have previous valuations or the GSEs, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have a previous valuation. And uh, we're going to, as a lender, take a look at the property data collection and say, does the property, uh, is the property eligible under, under their policy? Is, is the condition adequate? Does it have, you know, the, the adequate features or the questionable features that we have to take a look at further? Is there something that makes it ineligible? And so then they can say, oh yeah, we're doing a waiver or no, we need to upgrade it to a hybrid. And, and it's very much uh, risk-based in those policies. And so as an appraiser, now I'm seeing these offerings of different products and I find that uh, as we work with appraisers, we work with firms and, and individuals as well, uh, we don't necessarily see the behind the scenes that the lender might or the GSEs might. So the lender is looking at this whole spectrum of what they can do and the different uh, the different offerings or, or options or opportunities. And the appraiser is saying, why in the world would they order, uh, you know, a, a 1004 hybrid? Why would they order a hybrid? You know, this is a you know, this is a an old property, or this is a, a, a you know a complex property, or something like that. But when you take a look at it, um, the lender is making a risk based decision. So mm -hmm. a lot of the time, it it is tied to something other than collateral. That's not the only piece that a lender uses to make their decisions. They're able to take a look at things like you know, credit score, things like income, things like uh, job verification, and and other pieces. Those aren't my specialty, but I know that sort of goes on behind the scenes as well as the collateral valuation. So collateral valuation is just one one piece. And so having that understanding um, helps us really understand that that bigger picture. And what used to happen is we had the waiver where there was no appraisal, but there was also no new data collection. Mm -hmm. Or we had the full appraisal where the appraiser went out and, and things like that. And we still have those, um, but we're seeing that broader spectrum. The first clip from our value update series with Josh Wallet. Stay tuned for the next clip when we jump into some conversation about hybrid appraisals. And keep in mind, if there's a topic that you'd like to hear more about in the future series, be sure to let us know. We'll see you next time.